वंस अगेन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड माय सिंसियर थैंक्स फॉर टॉलरेटिंग मी और एक्सेप्टिंग मी व्हाट एवर यू आर डूइंग मे बी एट द एंड ऑफ दिस आवर यू विल बी अ लिटिल मोर क्लियर वेदर यू आर टॉलरेटिंग मी और वेदर यू आर एक्सेप्टिंग मी एंड माय टॉपिक्स एंड द डिस्कशंस दैट हैपन लेट मी टेक यू लॉन्ग 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 बैक to a time when there was this wonderful group called inter religious harmony movement and they used to do a lot of programs to bring uh, people of different faiths and different communities and different religions together to create that uh, harmony particularly among the youth they did very good uh, work so there was this uh, uh, workshop seminar that they had organized on uh, what they called as religious tolerance and they were very very well educated and knowledgeable people who came and started speaking on the topic of uh, religious tolerance and how it is the need of the hour and how it benefits everybody and how society improves and so many things that uh, you know happen if there is better religious tolerance they had asked me also to speak for 5 minutes i think they couldn't tolerate me more than 5 minutes they said you come I said, okay, five minutes is good enough for me. I went on to the stage and I said, I'm sorry, I don't agree with religious tolerance. And there was a shocked silence. They were wondering why did we allow this fellow to go on the stage? There, maybe they were getting ready to come and throw me out. I said, yes, I mean it. I do not agree with religious tolerance. I would like all of us to have religious acceptance. then i explained in these very simple words the difference between tolerance and acceptance tolerance does not allow you to take the person as is there is along with their uh, flaws whereas acceptance is where you actually are open to the person as is where is without any uh, you know holding back tolerance indicates i don't like you i don't agree with you i don't think what you are doing is right but me i am that great person who is somewhere high up there who wishes to be you know high above and tolerate whatever you are uh, uh, doing i will put up with something which is painful harmful not wanted i will endure it just because i am this great guy who is going to allow you to do what you want but acceptance is the respect that you give to diversity people who are different from you are not necessarily inferior to you or wrong or whatever no they are just different from uh, you so if you learn how to accept uh, people to bring in in the same flow and the same harmony people who come from different backgrounds different genders we have so much of gender uh, unacceptance and tolerance going on sexual orientation as you know that's been in the news quite a bit of late religion of course that has been the ultimate of uh, intolerance without attempting to change the other person if i genuinely feel that this person is doing something which is different which i don't practice or i don't do but i don't have any intention of changing this person because i'm not tolerating the person i am accepting that uh, person and that attitude that behavior that way of thinking you know encourages you to see people as individuals rather than groups of people this happens very 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 uh, often tolerance is where you say okay i can live with x whatever may be your behavior is religion is race is culture is uh, habits acceptance takes you into that realm where you say x is okay i don't necessarily have to agree with x on 
hundred things I can agree to disagree, but still I accept that um, uh, X. Now, how does this come into uh, play? If you want to first you know, understand and believe in the concept that your life can be far enriched if you learn to accept people instead of just tolerating uh, people. Instead of just saying that there is so much corruption, there is so much hatred, there is so much in this and that and all these hundred things, but it's okay, I will tolerate I will move on with it. No, that will make you perpetually unhappy. You will never feel that life is good or the world is good or people are good. And therefore, your quality of life will suffer. So by tolerating people and not accepting them, you're not doing a favor to anybody else. You're doing a disfavor to yourself. You are making yourself unhappy. People don't even realize this. Whenever I am tolerating uh, uh, you know, somebody and feeling bad about it, what a horrible fellow. Look at his behavior, look at his beliefs, look at his actions, look at his this and that. I don't like uh, it, but I will still accept it. Do you think you'll be happy if you have that approach to life? You will perpetually be unhappy, no? See, that person will be that person. If he has a different way of thinking, if he has different beliefs, if he has a different religion, if he has different sexual orientation, if he has different value systems, he will continue what he is. You cannot influence him. You cannot change him. But you can change yourself. Here, I come to one important area. While we cannot change adults, you see, most of the adults are already formed in their thinking. So one of the things that I feel I have uh, learned over the years is you work with younger and younger people, your chances of success are much higher. That is why I appreciated this interreligious harmony movement, because their focus was on students, on children. They used to get groups of children from high school to PUC to degree college and make them into groups and come in for these workshops where we used to give them an exposure into different faiths. And believe me, so many of them would turn from tolerance to acceptance. Over the years, I have met people. Suddenly a gentleman comes in, you know, some well-to-do person in some field doing whatever it is, and I accost him and he says, uh, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. But 20 years back, uh, when I was a student, I had attended this workshop where you were one of the people who spoke about the difference between tolerance and acceptance. And I picked it up. Today, I understand and I look, my whole perspective has changed. Why I'm telling you this today is because we are on the eve of Teacher's Day. Monday is Teacher's Day. In fact, today, I had half a mind to take up a topic which is connected to teaching, but I said, no, we'll do it later. There's no hurry. We don't necessarily have to do it on the uh, Teacher's uh, Day. But the fact remains that if you are a teacher, and when I say teacher, and not restricting it to class teachers, subject teachers, college teachers, lecturers, professors. Yes, they are definitely teachers, but in some way or the other, all of us are teachers. If we are interacting with younger and younger people, I think automatically we should take on this role of a teacher. And today's teacher, in this 21st century, dealing with the digital natives, as we call them, we need to be a facilitator and not a knowledge giver. And facilitate in what? We can facilitate the children to learn 
about acceptance instead of tolerance. The whole world goes by tolerance. Let us teach our youngsters, be it your child, be it your neighbor's child, be it your student, be it your counselee, whatever it is, let us drill into them that you have to accept and not just tolerate. And it should be done in your interest because it will improve your quality of life. You're not doing a favor by accepting somebody else. Once you understand that, then it becomes meaningful. Then you can really start thinking positively in terms of you know, enriching your life and improving your uh, you know, relationship. So what do we uh, do about uh, uh, this? Huh. I spoke about youngsters and I spoke about teaching particularly because uh, we are on the eve of um, you know, Teacher's Day. So we already had a very nice uh, uh, greeting on uh, Ganesh Chaturthi. I wish you all the wonderful and all the blessings of Ganesha. At the same time, in advance, I would like to wish all of you teachers a wonderful teacher's uh, uh, day. And I am indeed not only a great admirer of all teachers in whatever form, as long as you are taking care of the younger generation, doing something to give them a better upbringing or a better you know, life, uh, whatever it is. If you are doing that, then I classify you as a teacher. And as I said, I heartily congratulate you. I look up to you. And I also feel jealous of you. Because you get to spend your whole day with children Whereas people like me spend our whole day with boring adults. And you not only get to spend your day with children, you actually get paid for it. Amazing, no? And children can teach us so much about this difference between tolerance and acceptance. I will never forget that little story where, you know, it happened in a small village where there was a drought, famine. All the crops had failed. Villagers who depended purely on agriculture, they were in a miserable condition. They, had, they were you know, on the verge of starvation. One full year went past. The next year, it was time for the monsoon. And they were all in great anxiety preparing for it, saying that as soon as the rains come, we will sow the seeds, we will start the new crop, and in the next two, three months, we will have a fresh crop, we will have enough food grains, and we'll be back to normalcy. But what happened was the rains did not come. The prediction was that on certain such date, the rains should come. It didn't come. Some days the clouds came, but the rains did not come. The clouds moved uh, away. And people were getting very, very sad, panicking, literally, they said, if the rains don't come and if we cannot do the sowing on time, this year's crop also is written off and we will all starve to death. But what can you do? You can't create rain from nowhere, no? So the elders got together and they said, Why don't, we've tried everything else, but now it is in the hands of God. So all we can do now is to pray to God. If God gives us rain, we have made it. So they said tomorrow morning, all the villagers should collect in the village square. And all of us together will pray to God. And since that village had people from different denominations, different faiths, different religious beliefs, they said, you get your own source of your belief in God. You get your own symbol of your devotion to God. Let us have everybody there. So you know what happened next morning? Somebody is walking in with an idol of Ganesha. Somebody is walking in with a cross. Somebody is walking in with the Bhagavad Gita. Somebody is walking in with the Quran. So like that, people of different faiths, denominations, walking in, with a symbol of their faith in God. 
there was this young girl who was seen walking into the group carrying an umbrella, nothing else. And people said, what's wrong with you? You were told to get something which is your symbol of your faith in God. She said, yes, I have so much faith in God that when we all sit here and we pray to God, God will give us rain and I don't want to get wet going back home. But that is the innocence of a child. But that is what binds us together. And that is what we need to regress into in order to move from tolerance to acceptance. Coming all the way back into our personal and family lives. Every now and then, unfortunately, because I'm a counselor and because a lot of people believe that you know I can help them out in some way or the other, they come to me, for example, let us say about marital issues. A couple, you know, who is not getting along well, let's say a wife who feels that she's not being treated properly by her husband, and she is very unhappy. So she comes to the counselor, right? Now, as we sit talking, as we start going deeper and deeper into detail, what I realize is that she is tolerating her husband's behavior. She's not accepting it. And the more she tolerates, the more her stress and impatience is building up. And the day will come when she will get so angry, so frustrated that she will walk out. You see what happens because of tolerance, which does not lead to acceptance. These are some very simple, but very, very important uh, uh, things to keep in uh, mind. And to do that, when you are faced with something which looks impossible, looks like something which you cannot accept or you cannot uh, tolerate, please go back to the very simple proverb. There are very few proverbs which I actually admire and accept. Most of them seem to be talking off their head without knowing and we keep copying uh, them. But out of the few that I really appreciate, one which I uh, really like is the proverb which says, pain is inevitable. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. You will have pain. It is inevitable. You will have stresses. You will have obstacles and hurdles. You will have setbacks. That is inevitable. Suffering is optional. It's in your hand. You can decide whether to suffer because of whatever is happening to you or to learn lessons and to move on with that. And that is where this concept of the you know, difference between tolerance and acceptance uh, uh, comes in. Okay. Now, if you have accepted and understood whatever I've said, let me go on to the practical side of the thing as I always believe in. There's no point in giving one bhashan to people and impressing them unless I have something concrete to offer. right? So every week I do this little research of mine and come out with points and tips by which I can perhaps help you or guide you or make you aware of certain things which you can do, which will help you and improve your quality of life. So here we have made this uh, uh, slide. Anis has prepared beautifully with some nice graphics to add to that and make it more attractive. That is tips for converting tolerance into acceptance. Very often when I'm only tolerating like I told you the case of a wife who's very unhappy with the husband, but goes on and on and on tolerating. Now, where you can convert the tolerance into acceptance, and acceptance does not mean allowing the other person to ride roughshod over you or to impose his will on you or something. Acceptance means what I will assert for myself, what I will do and what I will not uh, do. But I will not just keep tolerating for it, right? So here is the first uh, point. List out areas where you are being intolerant. Please do this exercise for yourself. Sit down on a weekend or on a nice quiet evening 
and list out the areas where you are getting worked up, you're getting irritated, you're finding it very difficult to tolerate what the other guy is doing or what the people are doing. Right from generally, you know, you see the news and you start getting angry. Why are these people doing these, 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 all these uh, uh, things? Going right up to your own home, your own family, your own relationships, where you are just getting very, very upset, very irritated, very angry. And you're forcing yourself to be tolerant because you're not accepting it. The next step is to develop curiosity. In many cases, when we lack tolerance towards others, it's simply because we don't understand them. The moment somebody starts doing something bad to us, the moment we hear that somebody is doing some activity which we don't like and we don't agree to, we lose interest in finding out deeper about that person. So I would like you to please develop the curiosity where Try to understand the person better before putting labels uh, on the uh, person. The other day, there was this boy who was complaining to me, saying that my father always keeps putting down my friends. And he keeps saying that they are no good for you. You should not be with them. They are rascals and they are vagabonds and all. And he told me, uncle, each one of the fathers of those boys also tells the same about us including me. So every father seems to think that my son is the good one and all his friends are bad. Now why does that happen? Because the person has not taken the trouble of understanding them. And that brings us to this very, very important skill which we call empathy. Develop that skill continuously. As I have told number of times, empathy is the why behind the what. He does something, she does something, they do something. As I said, have the curiosity, have the inclination, have the interest to find out why the other person is doing it. The more you understand that, the better are the chances that you will be able to move towards acceptance, even if it is not 100%, but you can start moving towards that. Uh, acceptance. And here comes a very important thing. Is the other person's habit harming you? Check that out. If you are directly vulnerable and in the line of fire and getting affected by the other person's things, then yes, you have to do something about it. So at that point, you first take precautions to protect yourself. Otherwise, as long as you are vulnerable, as long as you are open to being attacked or harmed by other people, there's no question of tolerance, acceptance, all these things have no meaning. Here you are worried for your safety, be it physical safety or even emotional safety. Even if you are being battered emotionally, you need to protect yourself. Very few people realize the significance of uh, that. And then comes the uh, uh, point focus on major issues. Look at your life holistically. Sometimes we just get caught up by what one person is doing, or one particular aspect of uh, life, or one particular group who is behaving badly, or one particular environment you know, where I find that people are not uh, to my liking or to my uh, acceptance. So if you can identify and say, what are the major issues? What really affects my life? What are the factors which determine by my success, my fulfillment, my happiness? Let me focus on that, not get caught up with the smaller um, things. And then avoid this thing of being superior to the others. Your ego plays a very important uh, role. I told you now, in most of the cases of tolerance, it is, you know, me raising up my collar and saying, I am such a great guy. I'm tolerating this fellow. I'm allowing this fellow to do what he wants and I'm not fighting or I'm not punishing or something. The moment you get into that superior feeling, 
and the moment you allow your ego to take over, you will not be able to successfully accept people and move on with uh, uh, that. There's one very basic question which I always tell people to ask uh, themselves. I repeat it today. Is it more important for you to be happy than to be right? Which is more important to you? If you can get both, nothing like it, of course. But when you are faced with a situation where you have to select one of the two, you can either be happy or you can be right. Take your time. Think over. You don't have to respond to what I'm saying right now. A lot of things which I raise up, you know, they don't have specific there and then answers. And if you are the impulsive types who immediately jumps at something and says, no, I don't agree to that. I think this is better and all that. You're doing the same thing. You're not accepting what another person is saying. You're just tolerating or you're even intolerating. So take these at face value. Whatever I'm telling you today and on all the days is not from some philosophy or some indoctrination or something great wisdom from some guru. It is all based on actual human behavior and interactions, which I have been seeing not for years, but for decades, and that is what I share with you. So ask yourself, is it more important to be happy or to be uh, right? And then look inwards. Where you are being unreasonable, in most cases, you know what happens? We are only talking about tolerating and intolerating the other person, accepting or non-acceptance of the other uh, person. But what about me? In Hindi, there is that proverb, no, ke kali do se hai. you can only clap with both hands, you can't clap with one hand. So somewhere along the line, be magnanimous enough, be broad-minded enough to understand and accept that at least to some extent, I may also be unreasonable. I may also be doing something which is wrong, which the other person may not accept so easily. And that brings me to a very important thing. Please stop trying to change the world. It never happens. People who take up this great mission and become saviors and rescuers and this and that, they don't achieve anything. Try to change yourself. Now, at a very practical level, talk it over whenever it is possible with the people whom you disagree with. If you come to some good understanding, great, you're happy. Many a time it doesn't happen. If you don't come to an agreement, agree to disagree. Even that is a wonderful way of accepting. Unto you, your thinking and unto me, my uh, thinking. We will not clash with uh, each other. Don't go by this rumors and social media. I don't have to tell you. Left, right, and center, every day I'm coming across the harm which is being done by irresponsible social media, rumors, herd mentality, people getting carried away with false news and all that. Don't worry about the world. You can't change the world, as I said. You can't uh, wipe off social media. But as an individual, you can do something about it. You be the one person who is going to go against the uh, tide. When there is a question of argument or disagreement with somebody, you know, like in social media, wherever it happens, please argue on issues, not on personalities. If there is any hope that you can resolve differences with people, it is if you restrict yourself to arguing on issues and not getting personal with people, avoiding accusations as they say. The next is take ownership of your feelings. No one can make you feel a certain way without your permission. This is an extension of what I said that suffering is optional. People can physically hit you. People can say nasty things to you. People can avoid you and ignore uh, you. People can spread rumors about you. But they cannot control your emotions and your thinking. Gain control over that and you would have 
really mastered the universe, as they uh, say. Remember that judgmentalism, that is looking down upon people, being very nasty, being in, intolerant, and not be, willing to accept others and all that, inevitably lands up with you feeling lonely. And loneliness, as I keep on reminding, is the greatest epidemic that has hit mankind already. And lastly, practice giving respect. If you give respect to others, you get back respect. That is the bottom line of all the discussion that I have said, which I think entitles me to that. One minute tea break. I'm going to have a nice hot cup of tea. Sorry, I can't share it with you all. But I can share Sonal, who's got one or two interesting things to tell you while we take the break. Tomorrow is weekend and day after tomorrow it's a teacher's day. It brings back a lot of memories about our teachers or we being teaching someone and we learning from someone. That's a non-stop journey. That's how we thought ki we should be felicitating or, you know, uh, Ali has kept a workshop today for teachers on life skills, how it is important to use life skills in personal life as well as in professional life. Today afternoon at 2 o'clock we are having that workshop and it's free for teachers who are 15 years and above teaching in the same institute. Isn't it wonderful to be part of it? Like this, it's like, you know, Banjara has so much of things that are been uh, happening over here. Right now, even lots of uh, students have been coming in and now DCS students, though we want to close the admission, but you know, those last moment when you know someone and they say, let me take this, you know, opportunity. I just want to be in the class. I want to learn something with everyone. It's okay. I'll catch up with the classes which are already over. They don't mind and they want to join the course. So this is how we are, you know, slowly enveloping everyone the new uh, counselors to be in the making are excited for the institutional visits and all the skills, the, what they want to learn from uh, diploma in counseling skills. All this is happening. So I thought, let me just share you behind the scenes at Banjara what all is happening. A lot of things are happening. And once again, happy Teacher's Day in advance to you. Ah, yes, after tolerating me or accepting me for half an hour, let us see what your responses are. I'd like to hear from you. And we already have Vinita's message, which says, does it mean that those who are not accepting are only tolerating most of that time to whoever we speak? We, are, we say we are tolerating so much and find it hard to accept. Yes, there are areas where it is hard to accept, but it is not in, impossible. The, you have to take a call. And including the extreme case, where after having made all my efforts, I find, no, I cannot accept it. Then I have to move. I have to give a new direction to my life. I have to rethink on my relationships. I have to rethink on where I am headed and what I am uh, doing. So often I find people 
get stuck to that comfort zone and think only in that narrow thing. And that is where this tolerating, you know, creates these uh, uh, problems that we do not move on to either accepting or rejecting also. Let me put it that way also. That there are times when you cannot accept, you can reject. And then you can move on to doing what you want, right? Okay. Madhavi says, some get influenced to others and change time to time. If the loved ones say good things, they get annoyed. Yes, that's part of life, Madhavi. People do keep changing. As I keep reminding you, relationships are always dynamic. Relationships all have to be nurtured. Yes, there may be times when the behavior of a loved one or a close person becomes a little intolerant. See if it's a passing phase. See if at that moment you can accept the fact that whatever has happened has happened, whatever will happen. Can you predict the future? Nobody knows. I remember from our childhood, we were brought up on that lovely little song which says, K Sara Sara, whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. K Sara Sara. Future we cannot see. So let us think about today. Let us see what we can do and how we can go about it. Yes, this person has changed behavior. Let us see how, whether it is for good or bad, whether we can, you know, uh, accordingly reciprocate and do things like that. Yeah, Surekha says too much of anything is bad. We must have a tolerance meter. <laughs> I wish we had an internal gauge that tells us when enough is enough. When we put up with far too much for far too long, then we end either emotionally exhausted or manipulated or taken for granted. That is the message that I have also been trying to convey. I'm glad Surekha has put it in a nice nutshell and given it to us. That we have to have that gauge which tells us when enough is enough. Certain things which you keep tolerating and you don't allow yourself to introspect and think that enough is enough. They are like that pressure cooker which doesn't have the release valve and one moment at some point it is going to burst before such a catastrophe happens before such a major upheaval happens as Surekha rightly said we need to understand when enough is enough and move on uh, uh, you know when instead of putting up with too much this indefinite toleration which a lot of people do Somehow I'm never in favor of it. They say it's okay, it's my karma, it's, I hope the other person will change, I hope things will improve. No, things don't improve like that unless you put in some effort. If you're putting in effort, then I understand, yes, you're doing something. But if you're just hoping and wishing, it takes me back to my childhood days when my grandfather used to say that wonderful uh, proverb, trust in God but tie up your camel first. You let your camel loose and then you say, God, my camel should not get lost. You're being unfair. You tie up your camel and then pray to God that the rope should not break or something should not happen. And I'm hoping that my camel will stay there, right? Okay. Ah, Pratima says, is jealousy the main ingredient hindering tolerance and accepting people? Jealousy is one of the ingredients, not necessary. It is not only when I am uh, jealous. It can happen because somebody is doing things which I don't, don't agree with. I have a different value system. I have different attitudes. I have a different approach. So even that may cause. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious of the other person. But the accepting what the other person does becomes very, very difficult. So I just keep tolerating. That is what I've been trying to help you to understand today that please learn to understand the difference. Maybe like Sureka said, if we have a tolerance meter, but right now it is not under production, it, like the vaccine, which is still being made. So we have to wait till such a meter comes. But in the meanwhile, we should not sit and wait for things to improve. We have to keep working on it, right? Okay, Renu says, you mean to say, if you want to be happy, accept 
and tolerate the situation so there won't be any protest or revolt it makes life more miserable uh, is it no you uh, mentioned that if you want to be happy you should accept and tolerate no accept and tolerate cannot happen together no if you are tolerating which means you have not accepted it and if you have accepted it that means there is no question of toleration so that is my you know, thrust of today's learning or today's discussion please learn to understand the difference and apply wherever it is necessary we have already discussed that where there is despite all my good intentions if there is no scope for acceptance then go in even for rejection instead of acceptance but just tolerating with the vague hope that things will improve the person will improve or that you know group of people will improve it generally does not happen it is a miracle if that does uh, uh, happen Ah, Divya says sometimes accepting uh, makes people to take granted and start exploiting. No, Divya, that's not uh, necessarily uh, true. When you accept something, you also draw certain lines. You say that, okay, I know that this is your attitude, this is your behavior, these are the things which you are doing, which I don't like. But for the sake of our relationship, for the sake of peace of mind, for the sake of harmony, I am going to accept it. When you convey that type of uh, uh, message, then you do not uh, you know, allow the person to walk all over you. The same thing applies. For example, people say the same thing about forgiveness. You know, If I forgive the other person, won't he keep on doing the bad things? No, life is not as simple as that. And if you are in control over... Uh, uh, yourself, then you know where you uh, stand, right? Yes. Uh, Surika says, how can I help a counselee to accept the indifference of her loved ones? She gets very vexed by their behaviour. One way of doing that, perhaps uh, Surika, is to help her to understand that what she calls as her loved ones are not the end all and be all of relationships. If she's got a parent, if she's got a spouse, if she's got a sibling, whoever it is, whom she defines as a loved one, and they are being indifferent. How do you make her accept it? First, since they are all very close loved ones, let her make that effort. Let her talk it over. Let her for some time even do a one-sided thing that even if you are indifferent, I will not be indifferent. I will take interest. I will make some gestures. Let her try. Okay. If she succeeds, we are very happy for her. If by chance she doesn't succeed, then you have to expand your horizons. Your definition of loved ones. I have been saying this time and again. That defined relationships are giving way to undefined relationships. Most of us are getting our solace, our warmth, our companionship, our love from people who are not our immediate family members or the closest to us. Take it from wherever it uh, comes. Yes, Anna says how to try to avoid others' jealousy. Now let's accept it, Anna, that you cannot avoid others' jealousy. You can avoid being a target of their jealousy. You cannot change others. Why don't you make that effort? If a person chooses to be jealous of you, it's very unlikely that you are talking it over, you are trying to... In fact, at times I have seen people get even more angry if the person says, please don't be jealous. I do care for you. I think you are as good as me. Let us work as a team. You try all those things. And people do not like it. They get even more jealous. Who are you to preach to me? Oh, you think you are so great that you can tell me what to do. And the jealousy can actually you know, increase. So what you need to do if you are the target of jealousy is to protect yourself. And for that, we have discussed so many times earlier also. Firstly, if you can get away from the person, nothing like uh, 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 if it is possible. 
If that is not possible, can you minimize your contact with that person only to that extent that it is needed? And the message also goes out to the other person that I'm not going to be, you know, hanging around and giving you opportunities to make any remarks or to do something nasty. If that is not possible, if the person is so close to you, then you need to emotionally detach yourself and say, I feel bad, I feel pity on this person that this person feels jealous of others, which is an indicator that the person feels inferior. I am thankful, I am grateful that I am not in the shoes of that person. I don't feel jealous of anybody. I am complete by myself. I feel comfortable in whatever I am and I am doing. So I am superior to this person and I will mentally segregate myself or insulate myself from the other person. Roshan says, by tolerating, I feel that one is damaging her own health. But by accepting, you are in peace with yourself and nurturing and improving the relationship. The first part I straight away agree with Roshan. That when you are accepting, you are at peace with yourself. You are not damaging yourself with that. You know, all the time, that irritation, why does this person do that? I have to tolerate so much and this person is being bad to me. So you rise up of that and you are at peace with yourself. The second part of what Roshan said is peace with yourself and nurturing and improving the relationship. Now you have to also accept that that may not be possible every time. For whatever reason, the other person may not reciprocate. If so, understand that you know you have to move on. You can't dictate things to others, right? <coughs> okay. Roshan also says sometimes it's very difficult to tolerate a person who is stubborn and rigid in thinking. I would rather give up this friendship than spoil my peace. Exactly, that's what I said. No. That where you cannot uh, convert tolerance into acceptance, convert tolerance into rejection. See how you can move on. See how you can insulate yourself. It is possible. Nothing is impossible if we develop that courage, if we are willing to swim against the tide, if we are willing to take a few risks, if we are willing to carve out our own path instead of all the time sticking to the beaten path. It can be done. Surika says, excessive tolerance of alcohol leads to addiction. Excessive tolerance of people's negativity may lead to approval addiction. Absolutely right, Surika. You put it in beautiful words. If you are tolerating some person's negativity, since she has used the anomaly of <coughs> alcohol, let me tell you that I have come across so many, uh, let's say, wives whose husbands are addicted to alcohol. And what they do, you know, they keep protecting their husbands. The husband is violent, the husband is doing all sorts of bad things, but she keeps protecting him. That is what we also define as becoming codependent on alcohol. She doesn't drink, but she has become codependent on alcohol. If somebody comes home, she gives excuses saying that, no, he's got a headache, he's sleeping. Whereas the man is so drunk that he can't sit and talk properly to uh, people. So these are the type of things that we need to guard ourselves against. Whether it is at home with a family member, whether it is in office, wherever it may uh, uh, be. Yes, Jayshree says, even 17 years after DCS course, the class of tolerance versus acceptance is still fresh in my mind and has helped me a lot in my relationship with family, friends, and society at large. Acceptance is a very positive outlook. I do not tolerate, but I accept people and situations. That's a beautiful thing you added. One more word, Jayashree, which is situations. Sometimes it is the situation that is uncomfortable or bad, not the people. People are caught up in a situation where they cannot change, they cannot rebel, they cannot improve. So instead of labeling that person and putting down that person, accept the fact that that person is doing things because of the situation that he or she is uh, uh, 
uh, in yes sonia acceptance makes things very easy going from tolerance to acceptance is difficult but believe me once you have done that then life not only becomes easy smooth relationships improve your decision making and your assertiveness improve so many things happen if you learn this basic uh, uh, skill right ah good to have aditi back with us after a long time hope you are doing well aditi she says sometimes when you cannot improve the relationship i feel best thing is to insulate yourself with acceptance so that you do not allow them to hurt you any more exactly this is something which i have been propagating throughout that once in a while we may find ourselves in a relationship which despite our best efforts we cannot accept we cannot improve we cannot you know try to bring it to a position where it is to our liking and that is when i keep reminding you can insulate i told you know that your uh, thoughts your emotions are under your control nobody can dictate no dictator if you go back to man search for meaning written by dr victor frankl even in the worst circumstances of the concentration camps of the german hitler he had his mind state and that is what saw him through and he came out of it and he did such wonderful work after uh, that and that's what he propagated and i also believe in very strongly that have that uh, thing that you can insulate you can control your uh, mind right surika says does acceptance mean that i allow you to behave the way you want to but i don't allow myself to be disturbed by it i would not say that i allow you to behave the way you uh, want i do not interfere i accept you as it is i also make it clear that i'm not allowing you i'm not giving you my certificate of approval i still disagree with the, uh, you i do not like it and i don't want to pretend that i'm uh, accepting it or i'm you know being nice about it or that it doesn't matter to me it does matter to me i do not like it i do not agree with this is this, this but i as you rightly said i will not allow myself to be disturbed by it you cannot dictate my life you cannot tell me that this is good for you and that is good for you that is where i will do what i want i want to have my own thinking if you ask my opinion if you are still in touch with me i will tell you that i do not like this particular behavior of yours and always as i keep reminding go by issues and not by personalities the moment you say you are good for nothing you are a liar you are this you are that you can never resolve the relationship or the discussion but if you say i am a person who is very sensitive when somebody tells a lie so when yesterday you said this 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 and i came to know that that is not the truth i got extremely upset in fact i was very angry with you and i wanted to express this to you and tell you because you are important to me i do care for you we have a relationship i wanted to tell you that this is what is happening that i got extremely upset i find it very difficult to accept people who tell lies or who do whatever it is that i do not find it so easy to accept uh, that so can you please make an effort and see whether you can change and still if the person doesn't so be it that is what these are some of the very basic simple things you know which govern our lives which sometimes make our lives difficult of course as i always keep saying bring about a change when there is no need for change don't wait for a crisis to take place don't wait till things get so bad that you get into something like an impulsive decision you react instead of responding and sometimes because of that you go from the frying pan to the fire life becomes worse than what it uh, uh, was so reflect over it and do things 
even if there is nothing very compelling which is happening right now. Vijay Lakshmi says, accepting the situation for a person, we will be open to new aspects of life. Very true. By which we can have more exposure to ourselves and to others. Our horizon broaden. Our thinking gets more and more better. And that is what happens when you move from this, just this tolerance or intolerance or whatever it is, to acceptance wherever possible and in extreme cases, rejection. Right. Roshan says, I have accepted the fact that my darling pet is lost. If he comes to me, I will be happy. And if he doesn't, that's the way it is. Jo bhi hota hai, accepted ke like hota hai. True. Situations are beyond your control. You have a pet. You have nurtured the pet. You love the pet. You took care of all his needs day in and day out. And the pet is lost. You don't know where he is. How did he manage to get away and whether somebody has kidnapped him or whatever may have uh, happened to the uh, pet. Now, what do you do? There are people I know who get so irritated, so angry. They keep you know, saying that all the people in the locality are horrible. What is the municipality doing? What is the police doing? None of my you know, friends have come and helped me. See, everybody is so intolerant. Nobody understands what I am going through. You can keep making life miserable for yourself. So like I said, pain is inevitable. The pain of losing a pet who has just disappeared and you don't know whether he will come back or not. Such a pain is inevitable. It can happen to anybody anytime. Suffering is optional. And when Roshan says that if he comes back to me, I will be happy. If he doesn't, that's the way it is. Very nice example because I know that this is exactly what is happening to Roshan for the last two days. That the pet has you know, just walked out of the gate and somehow he has not come back and uh, she's trying her level best to get the pet uh, back. These are some of the very simple you know, things which we need to work on. And we can work on it. It is not very difficult. In fact, taking one step forward, because some of you even came out with this uh, questions or doubts about you know, what happens if the person is extremely bad, what happens if the person is you know, just not uh, obliging you or changing or whatever it is. Yes. What I was speaking about today is the day to day situations, difficult people, difficult uh, groups of people, difficult environmental conditions, difficult, uh, you know, whatever politics or corruption or terrorism or whatever it is. All these things we were discussing about with respect to this difference between tolerance and uh, um, acceptance. I have been doing work on this uh, very interesting concept, which they call as narcissism. Of late, I don't know, you may be hearing that a lot of people are talking and using this word saying he is a narcissist. He has narcissistic behavior. It's such a tongue twister. Right? You have to really concentrate to even pronounce it. But it has always been there. There have always been narcissists. But the awareness suddenly seems to have grown and I get more and more people. And the interesting thing is, I'm getting people who are making very nice, you know, categorical statements. He is narcissistic. I am an empath. Now, what does that mean? What is the relevance of that? What is the significance of that? We shall discuss, as they say, you know, in the TV serials in the next episode. So. If you choose to come back and be with us next Saturday, which is the 10th of uh, September at 11 o'clock, we will discuss this very, very important issue because even once in a while, if you get caught up with somebody who has got a narcissistic personality or behavior, life can be very difficult. Let's learn how to cope with it. And let's also create this awareness and help others when you come across who are suffering because of narcissism, what we can do about it. Okay. So see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.